I'm a bit rusty at these videos nowadays. But listen, I, I put out a video, you know, not too long ago with a little bit of an update and uh, some gear talk and uh, some gameplay with my buddy Glenn Green up in Ontario. And I'll drop a few links down below to those videos if you haven't seen them. Uh, but in that video, I did talk a little bit about some health concerns I've been having that have uh, kept me off the ice. And, uh, and I appreciate all the reaching out um, that, that, that happened and the messages I got and the texts and the, the phone calls and everything. So really appreciate that. I appreciate everybody looking out for me and being concerned. And just came back here and want to let you know uh, things seem to be on the uh, upswing now. Uh, I did actually do a goalie clinic, uh, my second time doing it, the Watch the Puck Clinic in Rochester. And hopefully we'll do some video, I'll at least do a little bit of video telling you about the gear I took for that at some point, probably in the near future, because I have gear piles everywhere again. Uh, this place is a mess down here. But since I did that and I survived that, I decided it was time to start getting back into the swing of things. And I got together with my uh, buddy Dave that runs a skate, um, and now Ian, who's helping out running the skate too. Um, these are the skates that we do uh, locally here. They're a pickup skate to kind of a group of people that are regulars, and i uh, got lots of videos on that. Uh, my buddy Dave has a software program called Perfect Skate that is designed around managing skates like these. It helps you uh, make sure you have rosters set, you have enough people signed up. You can text blast to say you have a skate that you need, you know, a goalie or whatever. Uh, it helps you manage the payment from everybody and all that. I'll drop a link down below to Perfect Skate if you don't mind, check that out. So yeah, this was my first fast-paced skate. Uh, well, it was my first skate back in quite some time. Uh, and with this, you know, kind of fast-paced group, a lot of talent, a lot of good. Man, there's some of them that, you know, going back four or five years, started out a little young and now they're getting older and they're still really good or better. Uh, Anyway, it's a fun skate. I didn't have very much for expectations for myself. It was really just about um, survive the skate, don't get hurt, and see how the body feels and what it tells me during and after the skate. And I think that went all right to the point where I'm playing tonight. So I still have to get that gear arranged. Figured I'd show you some clips of what I did uh, two weeks ago on Friday and tell you a little bit about this gear. Um, it was kind of, um, I was having a hard time picking out the gear. And I'll be honest with you. I was on a phone call with Scott from Vaughn of all companies and we were talking a little bit about some things and while I was talking to him explaining I had that skate to do my inspiration came to me uh, in that I have these killer Vaughn gloves now I believe these are uh, the 1030 model I'm not sure fairly certain they are customs uh, because they don't have any of the remnants of the model logo the model number like on the cheater or on the side of the leather uh, used to be like heat pressed on, I believe. There's not even remnants of it. So I'm pretty sure that these are not a retail glove. Um, but hey, I bought these a while back. I shared on, I know Twitter or X, whatever they call it, and probably Instagram that I bought these gloves. I didn't need them, but boy, were they calling out to me and I was able to make a, a amicable price deal and hey, they're in the collection. So I figured I really need to wear them. I, I like wearing these gloves, this model line, the style of Vaughn gloves. So uh, that that call with Scotty from Vaughn was my inspiration. I told him so on the phone, um, and then I needed to kind of move along. And since they're leather and I'm the Cooper goalie, I figured I better go with some Cooper pads for this big comeback on the ice. Um, so I went with these GP95L. Uh, these are the like later 80s, it's mid late 80s, I guess you call it model version. Uh, primary things that let us know that are the black uh, outside panels and they have the Velcro piece on the inside of the leg channel, which is designed to work with the GPKP knee pad that has the Velcro tab that sticks down. I did not use those um, knee pads. I used Cooper GP2 knee pads for this game. Uh, they're just something that feels comfortable and I like the style of them. So I thought pairing those up, um, you know, they're, they're both uh, later 80s and as a kit, it looked great together. My next thing I needed to do was figure out what jersey I would wear. Um, back in June, I received a blank Red Wing jersey from my buddy Herb. I figured I should throw a logo on it. And here's why. I already have, you know, a goalie Red Wing jersey. It's one I've worn many times. But I altered that jersey, and I altered it in a 90s style. It's a much bigger jersey than it needs to be. So you get that 90s, lots of extra fabric, great big arms. Chris Osgood style jersey. 
Um, I didn't have one that fits my Reactor 5 chest protector a little more snugly like a uh, later 80s type of design. So I put that jersey together. I had the Red Wings uh, logo and I cut that out using my vinyl cutter. Um, and I did a little short video I posted. I'll try to drop a link down below for that too. But it's um, Strip Flock Pro Vinyl by Caesar. It's like a felt faced vinyl. So it had, has a real cool look. It looks a little more like material than it does plastic or, or vinyl. Uh, so I've been wanting to do that. So I put that jersey together for that. Now that we had that, move right into the pants. These are my 1980s Wilson pants, the red with the white stripe. I always say this, man, I love these pants. They are so comfortable. They fit me just right. There's everything about them is uh, such a great um, pant, in my opinion. So I, I love getting these out on the ice and that was my obvious decision. From there, we went right to the combo. SK2000 with an HM30. I did not wear a dangler. Um, don't think I had to do much with this one. I had to replace the bumpers. So those are uh, replacement bumpers made by Ed Coverley. They're top notch. I said it many, many, many times. I highly recommend those. I, I'm, I'm almost to the point where I'm just going to pull all my original bumpers and replace them all with Coverly reproductions. They're perfect. They fit great. They're strong as can be. They're, they're way stronger than the originals and they're way stronger than even if you find new old stock originals. You just can't trust those. And uh, hey, uh, I forgot my stick. So give me one second. I'll go grab that and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Cooper Superlight GL. So the GL is the older design stick and this has a straight blade on it white or uh, red with the white logo it just screams uh red wings to me the shaft on this one's pretty weathered but the stick itself i don't think had ever been used before i got it i do believe i've used it once before but um the shaft yeah is really weathered like it sat outside for a long time or something and remember that's a lot less protected uh, than like the paddle and the blade because those have a fiberglass wrap to them so that helps protect the paint and so on um, the shaft is you know a bit weathered looking but other than that great stick straight blade can't beat that probably should have went a little bit newer with the stick into like a super pro or super pro light but i like using this stick um, and i don't get enough opportunities so there you go that is the gear again uh, pickup game variety of skill level and age group um, i think we have probably from 14 or 15 year old all the way up to no offense to anybody but probably there's probably some 70 year old or, or up in that age range there in this group it's a good time it's great people i have fun we hang out together in the pub afterwards and uh swap stories you know i didn't have any expectations for myself i didn't play exceptionally great at all i was really frustrating myself a lot i did have the advantage of having i think the better defensive team in this as a pickup game uh, we, we had some great defense going on in front of me so i didn't i didn't have to face 80 or 90 shots like it seems can happen sometimes uh, made a few lucky saves gave up a lot of soft goals and a lot of ru really good goals uh, but overall it's a fun time so hopefully you enjoyed this you know talk about the gear with some game clips involved and um, i will put out a full game edit yes the camera took a direct shot to the mounting box um, a knock on wood as always the uh, camera itself didn't get damaged uh, what happened is uh, usually what happens is the box flips over and it slides around in this case the uh, little mounting pad on the box it shattered um, and the camera popped out and slid along i hit stop just to like save that file if it was savable um, because the camera records in like segments and then I turned it back on, took the camera and stuff over to the bench, put the camera on the dashboard, kind of pointed at me, and hopefully have some usable clips from that. So, uh, yeah, I'm playing again tonight. i got to get this stuff put away so I can get another gear bag going. Um, and look forward to the uh, video of the full gameplay of this one in, in the next few days or week. So, as always, thanks for watching.